working to Ron in your conference, sure. telling them what they're doing wrong. Yeah. Oh, use vacation this week. Okay, so let's take a look. Because I I used that for all my master's stuff. We had yeah. APA and it worked, but I don't know. Maybe I switched it, but I don't remember doing that because that would have been tedious. Really? All right, welcome. We're going to talk Mendeley. There are other options. The reason why I'm presenting it is I'm working on my PhD and probably. I don't know, two thirds, three quarters of the way done, and within the second semester being there, I had a classmate or two that said, this is a tool you need to be using. It works much better than whatever you're doing. Took a few uh, classes, library, uh, one hour things at University of Minnesota about it, and I'm just gonna show you why I think the tool is good. I'm not necessarily convincing you that uh, if you only need one reference and you want to do easy viv at the end of a Google Doc that can't do one reference, fine. But if your goal is a little bit bigger, I think this does a very nice job. Uh, the place I wanted to start with is I'm going to kind of hop between screens. And I said bring your own computer if you'd like because you can do any or all of this during this session if you would like. So the first one that I have there is that creating an online account is free. The website is mendeley.com. And when you get there, it looks something like this. Uh, from that main screen, uh, you have the ability to download the desktop option of it. And I'll show you how those two sync together. There are some benefits of the desktop version, for example. I'll talk about this later. Uh, the way it integrates with Microsoft Word, in my way, in my mind, is the best reference manager I've seen. And you need the desktop version to be able to do that. Uh, the online portion when you are logged in looks something like what I have on the screen. And you can you can manage these however you would like. So my file system obviously doesn't have to match whatever it might be. I have it set up based off of my University of Minnesota courses. And within those courses, subfolders that match the topics. And those topics are very easy to search for at the top. Uh, I like the online version for uploading things in. You're looking at the Mendeley interface when you're logged in. There's a way to add on that upper left hand area where any of these options may make sense depending on how you're bringing things in. So for example, you have the ability to import a document. So for, for many of my classes, I have to find the PDFs from a library or they'll send it to myself. When I import the document, it isn't just that it's importing the document, it's also importing all of the information about that document. So for example, if I'm looking at something like, you know, whatever it might be, here's discovery learning, maybe that's just books. Whatever it is that I'm bringing into this, uh, I did not have to bring in all of this information. So for example, this DeSessa conceptual change article, my professor sent me this PDF, I uploaded it through that, and all of this information, like words from the year, the volume, the pages, the abstract, the DOI, the URL, all of that comes with it when you upload it in the Mendeley. Maybe I'll take a step back. In my opinion, I think this tool is worthwhile thinking about if you have two things that you see you or your students using. One is if you want to have a way to just keep whatever you have, whatever you're reading organized, I think it does a nice job. And this doesn't just have to be a research professor doing research. What I've started to use it a lot more for as well is just if I'm reading a couple books in the summer, it's very, very nice in my opinion to have a document that shows what I've read, to have it in a form that I can see again. And I haven't done this for all things, but just to have the ability to take notes either in Mendeley or just leave things. So most of my style, which once again doesn't have to be yours, is a lot of times in my classes I take notes in Google Docs or someplace else, and I'll just drop it right into the notes section basically so that I can search that information at a later time if I want. I talked a little bit about how you can do uh, a desktop download. Once again, if you do that, the interface looks something like this. It's nothing super fancy. There's a lot of busyness that's happening on my screen, but I just want to show you a couple things that I think are powerful. Obviously, whatever file structures you bring, go with it. In addition, uh, it knows that there 
there may be some mistakes when it brings things in. I'm not gonna claim that Mendeley is perfect. I don't think there's any citation manager that is, because if you're pulling information off of a PDF, there's some layer of OCR or something that's going on with it. So it's going to ask you, if I wanted to, to just look at the things that need review. If I'm just looking at this article, uh, I have no idea how well this is going to work. This is doing it live. Uh, I have never checked this source. I know that I downloaded it on April 25th. And right now, all I have is a year and the author. So when I pulled it in, that must have been all that was there. The desktop variety has the ability to search to see if there's more things that it can find about this article. And what it's going to do is it's going to look through various things about that article. If there's things that it can find through this second layer of search, it's going to add it to it. I don't think it did anything beneficial, so I'm not gonna let that stand. Uh, if I'm going down to something like this, I'm pretty sure all of this looks correct. I have the ability to say this is good, or if I let it do a search, it's going to just kind of look through that same information and try to do different things with it. To Larry's question that maybe you didn't hear him say before, is it does a very nice job bringing in the, the style that you want it to be. So behind the scenes, I already told my Mendeley, bring it all in APA 6 position. If you want it Chicago style or whatever it might be, then all of this, inter some of these might look different. Even the way that, what's it called, Larry? Sentence case, you said? Sentence case, yeah. Even the way that uh, it, the sentence case or not is going to change based off of what you set it as. But I'll even say there, if, if this is something that really matters to you, like you wanna, to publish something or promote something, I think it's very, very valuable to take a quick peek, and any of this can obviously be changed, and it's in real time. Uh, the way that it works is there's a sync between the two, so at any time if I sync it, the online and the desktop version will be talking the exact same language to each other. So that comes in handy if I'm bringing something in as an outside source, maybe I put it only in the online version. Uh, I'll show this a little bit later, but when I have something like Word open, if I want to import citations from Mendeley, it's going to open up the desktop version, because once again, that's how they talk together. Uh, I have a link that I'll share with you later about installing a Microsoft Word plugin. It's very, very straightforward. Uh, inside of the desktop, inside of the tools, is a ins install Microsoft Word plugin. So the first one is have an online account, then put the desktop version on it, and underneath tools is that plugin. I'll show that to you, like I said, in just a minute. And then the fourth option that I didn't think I was going to use that often, but I found more handy than I thought is there is also a Mendeley Google Chrome uh, importer. So for example, I just pulled this up. Uh, here's some article from the European Journal of Science and Math Education. This is the PDF, so I've already gone, just to show I'm not using the all-powerful University of Minnesota. This is uh, the MLC Eric Library. I was looking up something about math education. I like this. I went to the full text, and this is what shows up here. I have two options. I could download this to my hard drive and then put it in a Mendeley if I want, or if I just use this Chrome extension that I have on the top here, it's going to automatically bring in all of the information. And it also has this option, I apologize if you can't read it real great, that you can download the PDF if that's available. So I don't even need to do a backup on my computer if I don't want to. Now I would say good practice would be if it really matters to have it in multiple places. But if I go here, I am already logged into Mendeley, it's already connected. Here's all the information, it has a URL, it has the information here. I can choose which folder I want to put this in, what subfolder I want to put it in, and it's going to go directly into that spot. So that's just kind of the, the interface. So I'm going to pause for five seconds. Interface questions. Go ahead, John. Well, actually, I just want to apologize. I missed your first part. I got to mention desktop version? How do I get to the online version? Uh, Mendeley.com, or just Google the word Mendeley. And then you're gonna have to log in with some account. Uh, there, there are not privileges for using 
uh, educational versus personal, just have a way that you want to log in. It's completely free and where they want to make money is uh, they would love for you to use a little bit more of this groups feature of Mendeley. So just going a different direction, if you're wondering how do they survive, uh, you can create groups and share your research or your articles or your books with a group that you'd like. But if you want to do this with multiple groups, then they're going to ask you to pay a premium price to do that. In the academic world, uh, this has kind of become the norm as part of your vita, as part of your application for a job, not just what have you served, what have you done, it's also what have you read, what have you researched, what have you published, so it's all about you. Let's have it in a digital format that you can do something with. Did I answer your question, Sharon? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, so I want to show you what it can do. So you can easily organize and search your personal library, import papers and other documents, and I'm just going to show you what works and what doesn't work so well. So if I was doing this, I just basically have to find whatever it is that I'm looking for that I want to download or be able to do something with it. So just so I have a bunch of things here, I'm just taking this whole PDF text. If I'm looking at just this document here, uh, I'm going to be able to tell whether or not it's going to load well based off of how well that the text shows up in that PDF. So once again, here's the article that I'm looking for. I could take this and directly cite it or bring it into Mendeley. Almost everything that uh, is here is information that could go into it. I don't, maybe I clicked on the wrong thing, but I was looking to take something that had the, the full version of it something that I could show you. Basically what Mendeley is going to do is just look through the document, look at the title, look for headings and other things with it so that I can basically take this and bring it in. Now I already showed you this option that I can import it and it's right now trying to strip the information off of it. I would say this article did poorly, right? Because this is all caps, this is all caps, it's expecting that it's a web page, which is not correct. It has none of the authors and other information. So I would not say that it's foolproof. I can go a lot of different directions with it. I'm just gonna put this someplace that you can see it. So for example, I'm just taking this trial document and putting it in my desktop. So here's that document that I just did. And I have other ways I can upload it. So inside of Mendeley, I use this library tab almost exclusively. So here's all of my library. It can go wherever I want it to go. Like right now, if I clicked on add, it's going to go into a search folder. I'm just going to use this top folder just for sake of using it. And if I try to import something, obviously you understand how that would work. Like you just have to find whatever it is that you're looking for. Right now, it's uploading this information into Mendeley, into the folder that I want. And I'm gonna expect that the, the information that it strips off of this document, which I'm doing in live, and that I wanna show you the good or the bad or the ugly with it. It's uploading it. It's also storing this in my Mendeley online. So I do have the ability, if you're wondering, you know, do I have to have this file structure on my computer? I can go back into any of these folders and because I've uploaded the PDF versions of them, you're also storing your reading from the past. So for me, as somebody who uh, very soon is going to be writing my dissertation, it's nice to have something that's tagged, that's organized, that's in one place that I can just bring it from whatever it might be. John? Thanks for stalling while I need 11% of the loading. So. <laughs> when we find an article, say on the MLC website, yep. and we bring up the, the information about the article, we click on the 
I have the online one. So I click on the Mendeley, Mendeley online thing. It comes up, like you said, it may not recognize the correct format of it. So like mine's coming up as a web page. I did not remember what you said. Should we correct it there or should we go ahead and... So I would say you have to correct it at one, at one time in one place. So you have, you have three options. I would say if you have the time to do it, then absolutely. So I'm just gonna show you, here's option two. Most often what I do is I have my PDF open. If I, if I need it, I'm gonna edit it right away. And it doesn't really matter if I edit it here or if I edit it in the desktop version or if I edit it in that first online, it's all the same. But I'm just looking at this, this did slightly better. This is, it brought in the abstract and it brought in the title, but that once again, isn't convincing Pete Boggins that he's changing anything. He's already more skeptical. <laughs> Sorry, if this is YouTube, Pete Boggins. <laughs> that it's any better than what it was before. Uh, I'll even go here and see if I do this with uh, the desktop variety. Here's what I just pulled in. Searching through it, there's, there's nothing that it did better than that other than the abstract. At some point, there are some articles because, and I'll at least play devil's advocate with it, uh, because this document did not have any identifying information on the first or second page, it doesn't know where to look. So if you've pulled in uh, things off of libraries and have that cover page that has all the information, it's gonna do magical. I'm glad that I found something that doesn't too because I don't wanna promote it as like, everything about it is absolutely perfect. But where I think this shines is where I'm going with this. So Kirk was good, what imports well and not well. If it does not have any identifying information on anywhere on the document, sometimes I've still seen it where the desktop variety, you say search and it's searching through titles, it sometimes can find it. But what it definitely does well is capturing information so that, so capturing information like the references, so for example, if the article has that stuff on it, the author, the title, the publisher, the year, I could pull up another 20 that would work very well. That's not the purpose. But what I think it does well is the integration with how it cites while you browse. I, I think it's very, very, very well done. So for me, this is probably the number one reason I use it because I have to crank out papers. I don't have to add to my Vita or anything like that necessarily, but the ability for me in real time to have everything I've ever read cited correctly in the correct format from my Mendeley library is a huge time saver because if you've taken the time to set up your citation once correctly, it's always correct. I'll even go back multiple courses or other things are citing the same things, Mendeley knows, hey, that's the same article as this. You don't want to duplicate it. So I'm going to show you what this looks like in Word. And just so that you don't just feel like I'm a magician like trying to convince you of my tricks. Uh, I don't have anything set up ahead of time. It isn't because I'm lazy. It's because I want you to see that I'm just doing it in real time. So I'm just starting with a regular blank document. If I've already done the Microsoft Word plugin, on the top underneath references is now a part on the, on the ribbon that is all of Mendeley. So this is the insert Mendeley, this is a undo what you did, this is refresh, like if you notice something's wrong and you fix it in Mendeley, it'll refresh and update your document everywhere. Uh, insert bibliography, I'll show that in just a second. So if I want to insert a citation, uh, I'm going to have Mendeley open if it wasn't already open. Uh, I can take anything that I, I want. So for example, I don't know, whatever it is that I'm looking for, Bloom's Taxonomy. Uh, it knows the articles that I'm looking for. It's I already have this set up so that uh, it can it can pull in everything I want, APA variety. Every one of those citations, I have the ability to do other things with it, like what is the page number I'm citing, 
do I want to suppress the author, which basically means like if I say Ursani talked about blah, 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 and I only want the year. And then when I pull it into my document, it's going to be there automatically. Uh, if I have some place later on in the document where I have my bibliography, it's already created in a correct variety with the DOIs and other things that are done with it. I must not have ever used it for the last year and a half because this does not look correct. So if I saw something like that, I would go back into Mendeley, change this, I don't know, set an article that I don't remember, and I could make it so that everything there is correct. So if I'm looking for that thing that bothered me that it doesn't have sentence case, I guess I do a couple just because I can see it right here. If I take this sync it back in so that when I go to my Word document, I can refresh it and in real time it's updated. So sometimes I'm at a paper and I've got 23 sources, 22 of them are correct. I don't have, it's not just if I change it in my paper, I've got to change it on the next paper, or whatever it might be. I change it once in Mendeley and I'm in good shape. Once again, I think this feature is the number one reason I use it. Larry. No, I'm just trying to figure out exactly what you're talking about. Did you, what's the 2014 in the typing? It's the year. So he, he, he put the author on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. He suppressed the author. Sorry, yeah. he suppressed the author. Yeah. Okay. And if I he have something, if I have something that I, I want to have there, I can, I can always change my mind and go back. The other thing that's kind of neat, neat about it is it's going to know uh, when you've done things more than once. So for example, if there's a, a citation style that you like that the first time you have to say three names and the next time you call it at all, it, it knows that the second time needs to be different than the first. And if you erase one earlier, it adjusts it later on. So I'll go back to thinking about who your audience is. Maybe it's you, maybe it's your students, but what I enjoy about it is, is this plugin into Word is is really nice. Becky. So, but for the like for our students who are just learning APA, it they are gonna have to be able to identify if there are errors. Yeah, sure, I would say that that students should still know Purdue Owl or yeah. something like that. That's fine. I'm just checking. Yeah. So just to kind of show you this, like I can in real time change my citation style in one paper. Even though my Mendeley is set up as APA. Can you try Chicago? Well, I already have something wrong in set set in, so that's gonna be wrong. But <laughs> I'm just curious what it would do. <clears throat> is that correct? The question would be what if it can do what you put it to. Okay, what do you want it to do? Well it's it, 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 This is like it's putting them in automatically, but it's if you want to put up, yeah, do the footnote in the word, it would be able to do something like that. Uh, I don't use footnotes. Okay. You do. I, I'm trying sure to reference to insert footnotes. Yeah. 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 But this would be a good use for that. Do you know, Rich, can you show where you? I see that it's APA here, but you said a couple times you had your Mendeley account set to be APA. Can you show where that sure. was? Because I was looking around, I couldn't find that. Yeah. Uh, so I'm inside of the desktop variety. Uh, I don't even remember where I set it up originally. I felt like because it's the first time I put it on, it asked me. Oh, here it is. Uh, you citation style APA, and I'll even go back to saying that can that can easily be changed, and it's going to try its best to update everything as it goes in. I've already manually changed things to APA six. But look, it's using the Chicago author date. So let's just see it in real time. Confused, right? So what do you like? things that you could play with yeah. that, that 
I'm not familiar enough with year. See, the big advantage of this is that it's doing the references for you if you went, but if you're doing footnotes and you can't do that, then you don't. I think you footnoted it, didn't you, in your paper, in your paper? Uh, there's yeah. a footnote there, but you can see it's there, see the one at the bottom, the bottom, 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 nothing. At the bottom, well, I don't know. At the bottom of the page. Is that the way if you just put it in there? So if I was doing it, so my, my question, because I don't know enough about how the Chicago Foots notes look, you want this number of See, orders. there's the one that you scroll down to the bottom is where the input yeah. is. Yeah. And it's there. Down, down the bottom. Right, but what do you want down at number one? Uh, the citation. Yeah, the citation. Right, but where, so my question so is, like so then usually would you put the word if you eight. You put the all the bibliographic in there. So if you put something time. like here, what what would you usually put here? How about that? I can't tell if that was close or not. I just put it there. Yeah. Is that how it would look? Uh, that would be like a second reference to it. That would not work for us to put it in the paper. But you just can do it. Just put a formatting in. Right. I don't. I don't have the magic answer. <laughs> taking your documents and adding your own thoughts and other things that can be shared with it. Uh, I have classmates that do a lot more with this than I do, but you have a couple different options that for some come in handy. For others, you might say that's something I would never use. Uh, for me, I rarely go farther than pulling notes off of someplace else and pasting it here just in case I want to have it. If the document already had Uh, better stuff with it. If the document already has uh, keywords and other things like that, that's going to come with it. So if the author is right underneath the abstract or whatever, said the keywords or this, that, or the other, uh, Mendeley is going to know that. Number two is you can definitely put your own notes in, but here's the other option that. Uh, some of my classmates use quite a bit. If I open up this from Mendeley, I have students or classmates that use this tool, not that the, the highlighter and the notes in Mendeley are robust or awesome, but if this is their library that they want to go back to, they will upload this into here first and then use the tools inside of Mendeley and you can have those go along and, and save in real time with it. So I can take whatever it is and I can highlight, write, whatever you want. You can use your pen. I can use my pen, et cetera. Um, even put their own notes at some point in the document, but they'll do that right away and that's where their notes will end up. Instead of having it obviously as a, as a paper copy or having it someplace just in some side document like I like to do, uh, I have some classmates that use this feature that I don't a lot. The other option is you do have the ability that if you annotate on your PDF, you can upload that after you put your notes on it because basically it's a snapshot of whatever that time is. So for example, if you use your pen in that PDF annot uh, whatever that's called, PDF annotator with your pen, you could upload it with your notes on it and it still would have no trouble if this biographical information is already there. Notes. Well, I think the big question is my who's my audience? And I I thought maybe what I was clear enough that it, it might be you, but like for example, I I, I don't think it's Pete. I'm, I'm pretty convinced it's but I'm also convinced that it, it could be or should be your students. And it really goes back to like when, when your students, I'll pick on history majors, uh, secondary history education majors, or uh, past track students that are researching a variety of things that are preparing them for the STEM or for other things with it. Like how, how do they stay organized? Do they, do they reinvent the wheel every single paper with a new bibliography by hand, 
And if that's the case, should it start going to some spot? I'll jump ahead and then jump back. Uh, I do think there's other tools. I have some classmates that, that use Zotero quite a bit. Uh, at the University of Minnesota, it's probably about 70% Mendeley, about 30% Zotero, really dependent on the, the focus or the studies. Both of those are free. Both of those are, are, are robust and do a pretty nice job. Um, they call it PTOC for a minute, like not uh, site, not the footnotes thing, but like the interface, does it seem pretty Zotero similar? comes up, I just pulled it up over here, and it looks almost the same. The screen looks very similar to what you did. Yep, I, I think it's, it's very similar. Uh, EndNote has a, a, a very robust one that costs money. I think their basic version is not as good as the two that I've seen. And then there are any number of things, I'll pick on EasyBib or something like that, that can give you a one-time bibliography of decent quality. But I think a one-time paper with three citations is different than I'm a history student, I'm a pastor tech person building up my thesis paper, I'm studying whatever it might be, and I want to just keep everything I read organized because I got to the point where it's like, the great John Meyer is presenting and he's recommending this book and that book and the other book and I put it on some scratching on some paper and I have no idea if I'm ever going to look at that book again and I wanted to have a better way to keep going. Uh, I do think that the audience can be a group of people in this building. I don't know offhand how many groups you can set up. I know it's more than one. It's at least two or three that you can do for free. And then beyond that, eventually they're gonna ask you to get to pay stuff. But if you have all of the people in the math science division sharing it with each other, you could see, you know, like I read all these articles from NCTM or MSTA or whatever it might be that I've read these, I've already done the notes, I already have all the citations. You can have my work for free. Um, I kind of want to hear a response about student use. I'm okay if you say, eh, no. John, where, where are you at with this? Teaching language arts, we have nine components that we go through in the semester. And they're asked in the past to do one article review for last semester and then forthcoming. For every component, I'm asking them to find two pieces of current research so that they can start to have this pool of research to speak to these topics. So. I'm thinking this is going to be where I'm heading. We have just done the one that becomes free with Microsoft at this point. Mm -hmm. And I just asked them to find two articles this last semester. I still have to convince them that it's worthwhile to stay tuned with current research. Sure. That's, you know. So I'll just go back to John's yeah. before and yeah. switch gears with Larry. If you do it through Microsoft, where does it store? On the local machine over there. Okay. And it brings up one more thing, and then I will go to Larry. Uh, you can have uh, Mendeley, and I'm assuming Zotero would do the same thing, uh, automatically look in a folder that you put your information so that it automatically does the uploads. So you can skip the middleman that I showed you if you're okay with what I'll call the Google variety of uploads, and that's everything's just going to go in my all documents area, and I'm going to sort it if I want to later on. So I do have the ability inside of the desktop variety, inside of, I believe it's tools, uh, maybe not. To basic, here it is, to have it watch a certain folder, because maybe I upload all of the documents that I want into one folder, and if anything goes into their PDF variety, it's automatically going to upload it into my all documents in Mendeley. So it's kind of like, uh, compared to like Google Photos, you can have Google Photos on a desktop that says, anytime I put photos on my computer, automatically upload it to the cloud. This is the exact same thing. Uh, the encouragement from the University of Minnesota that I think was good, once again, is if it's important, you have a backup plan. So at very least, the cloud and one location, uh, there's horror stories of these people that are, I'll butcher parish, that 
they didn't do something like this, and if they, their computer died, they lost all of their notes and all of their research and all of their years of studies and things like that that has happened, but then you get the idea of how something like this works. Larry, I'm gonna go back. So I assume you can set up separate folders for separate projects, like separate readings, let's say, and do readings of 20th century American lit and have that as a bibliography, or a working bibliography with notes and stuff, and I could have a folder for teaching language arts, uh, hypothetically, right? And you could have different art translations also. So, I mean, you're able to organize it in such a way that you can... Sure, so, I mean, so that's... Because as, as an academic, this has advantages too, for that kind of thing that John's trying to do with his kid, with the students, is to organize a set of readings um, that they can keep the, the, the data on and, and maybe even notes and, and highlighting uh, for future use. I'm looking at it primarily for teaching the students, but it's, I'm guessing it's gonna be a fairly high impact, probably at least two and a half days to teach this, work, if you're looking for the placements, right? As undergrad, undergrad freshmen, I would, I would implement it. I'll go with half class and half full. I'll say a half, a half of a class period in group work. Because I, I think, the glitches that you're talking about, they're not gonna find in the first 10 minutes. They're gonna find it at midnight on a midnight night. Right, yeah, but, but they're gonna find those, they're gonna, they're gonna, if we have them use the library research tools, we're gonna have to teach them how to import it, and import it correctly. And then, then you've got the search tools within sure. Mendeley as well, right? Sure, and I would argue they, they need to learn how to find things from the library either way. Right. I, I do well, think. I mean, there's two different. I mean, you're going to import sure. from a multiple ways, and you can import that, right? Sure. I can. So if I got an article that's in my all that I found like from the library, I can import it into the one. Absolutely. Okay. Um, it already is in my list of all that stuff. But I would yeah, say, I did, yeah. Okay. File structure matters to some people more than others. I'm going to be honest. I think for some of my students, if they saw my file structure here in my Google Drive, they think I'm. I'm wasting my time. Like, why do you, why do you ever need the files? Can't you just look up the title? Can't you just search by author? And the answer is, I absolutely can. There, they're just, and maybe you are like, if you scroll the other thing. I'm okay with three thousand messages in my Gmail. I can find them by searching by person if I want. And okay, good. You live your life that way. I'll live my life a different way. But, uh, the last part of my presentation that I wanted to show is, uh, I do think Mendeley does a, a really nice job with two to three minute videos on pretty much everything I just said. And I really mean that, I think they cut to the meat very well. So how to get started, different ways to import your documents, how and why to get organized, how to generate citations inside of Word, uh, finding articles quickly. I didn't talk about removing duplicates uh, up in the desktop variety, you can search for duplicates and it'll know like, hey, this is the same as this. How to merge them and then how to use groups. So they would call that the big eight. You could argue what's more or less important. I think the power, once again, is when you save time by the second paper you write. And I don't know if, if you look at it one paper at a time and only with that focus that anybody is gonna and that's why it would be worth the time to invest in front loading in, in a class, especially if you're writing six papers, right? For me, it would work, be worth the time. I'm gonna end with, what What do you wanna see this do that I haven't shown you, or I did something fast, and you wanna see me do something differently? I've heard two different versions. You said the depth? The desktop version and the online version? Sure, so the online Would version. Would you recommend one or the other? Uh, my preference is I like importing things into the online version because I'm usually already online. And I can do this from any computer. Right. I don't need to have the one that has my Mendeley on it. So that um, you just need a Chrome extension for that? Or Chrome? You just need the internet. Yeah, so just a Any browser. Yeah. Uh, I don't use the desktop variety unless I'm cleaning up my work later on. That's my preference. 
I know some people that never use the online and use this add documents, add folders, and only work in the desktop variety, and that, I, that makes sense as well. Chair Schmidt, I feel like I have no idea if I'm meeting what you want. I just keep doing I don't really have or any, I try to do but this is, this is just a good uh, And then there's certainly ways to filter your searches and do other things So Becky brought uh, one in that it didn't know what it was correctly the first time. In my opinion, I would go to needs review on the left hand side. That was on the right hand side. Okay. Yep. But I don't know, like. And then I would have it just search. But I, I think this is the one that maybe did it right. Okay, let's go for it. But I don't know how I got it in there. So. This, has, this now has all the information, this is the journal, the year, et cetera. And the only thing that it did wrong is what Larry talked about at the beginning, which was the... Right, the but how did I get... Because you just copied and pasted. No, but how did, this is Mendeley. Yep, so Mendeley... So how did it do this and how did I get to that screen? I'll show you Becky's screen on my screen. Uh, if you go to Mendeley and you put things in there, they're gonna try to be smart. I mean, like, you're gonna get uh, the, the feed is just basically everything that's out there. They're going to suggest things for you based off of what you put into it. And basically what it did is it looked for that document and found it. Okay. So Becky has something like this. Like, I mean, whether you got to it the exact same way, that doesn't really matter at this point, but it found your article. And if I open up any of these, I have the ability to to take that citation and copy it correctly, uh, and I only showed one variety. Like you ha definitely have the ability that if you don't want the PDF, you can just put manual. You can put citations in directly from wherever it might be. I didn't answer your question, Becky. So I got to this by hitting feed. Mm -hmm. What happened? I hit feed instead of library accidentally. Yeah, and it. It's just going to look for things like what you have already put in. Okay, so then if I'm back here, It's going to insert a bibliography wherever you want it to be. It doesn't necessarily insert it at the end. Oh, yeah. It's no, going I to understand. It's I was going to put a citation wherever you put in your citation. Any other final questions? I'm going to, I'll answer any other Becky questions myself. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I have nothing else that's new for me on this floor. This is done. Is it possible to? Uh, trying to figure out how to, I, I do the same thing as John, I have a lot of stuff in my Microsoft Word mm -hmm. uh, reference manager, and uh, if I want to import them, I've been trying to figure that out, and I'm not being successful. I found the file on my computer, but I can't figure out how to import it. I've tried the import feature. Uh, I think I'm in the 
desktop version right now. Magic answer for you. 